Pectus Rose, it's Riley Byrne from fixpectus.com and in today's video what I wanted to talk about is how to lose the tummy fat and the pot belly associated with pectus excavating. So if you've got that big pot belly kind of accentuating your condition because it's making your indent look more prominent because your indent goes in and then your belly comes out heaps far, then we need to address that, okay? And, and the best way to address that is losing fat and then also developing your abs and your obliques, okay? But let me just say, we all have abs, we all have obliques, you have them now, you can develop them to be bigger so that they like, they're, they're more formed and they have more pop and they hold everything tight. But predominantly what we wanna actually be doing is just stripping the fat away that's covering those abs, okay? So how do we do that? Calorie deficit, guys. Energy balance is the most important thing when it comes to changing your body composition. And if you wanna lose fat, you need to be in a calorie deficit, which means you need to be burning more calories per day than you eat. So you need to calculate your total daily energy expenditure, the total amount of calories you burn per day, and then make sure you're eating in a deficit of 200 to 500 calories below your total daily energy expenditure. Uh, 200 if you wanna be more conservative and, and or 500 if you wanna be more aggressive with it. But knowing that the more aggressive you go with your caloric deficit, the more likely you are to burn into some muscle tissue. And that brings me to the next point, is the last thing we want when we're in a caloric deficit and we're trying to make our pectus look better and lose that, that belly fat and that pot belly is muscle loss, okay? Because developing muscle, developing your pecs, developing overall muscular physique is really key for making your pectus look better. So we do not want that to occur and that can happen in a caloric deficit. And how to how to avoid that is one, resistance training, a proper exercise regime, and two, high protein intake, guys. So you need to be making sure you're getting your protein in. So obviously protein you can get from animal sources, so your meats and then eggs, um, and then also there's a whole bunch of plant-based sources. You've got your legumes and soy products and stuff like that, as well as powders too, but I would recommend natural foods if you can. My go-to protein recommendation is like 2.2 grams per kilogram. There is some individual variants there, depends on your lean body mass and stuff like that, but typically that's a good guide, and, and, and I personally would rather have more protein and it just convert to carbs through gluconeogenesis um, than less. So yeah, you wanna have high protein, 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight is a good, just baseline recommendation, and that's gonna ensure that you're hopefully not burning into your muscle, or if anything, you could potentially be growing muscle whilst in a slight caloric deficit. So that would be my recommendation for you guys out there when it comes to maintaining muscle and what to do with your diet. But anyway, I don't wanna to get too complicated with that. Basically, just you need to focus on caloric deficit and higher protein. Also, you wanna be eating a micronutrient-rich, organic, unprocessed diet, guys. One ingredient if you can, okay? So just get vegetables, fruit, grains, and um, legumes, and meats, okay? So I would avoid anything that's really in a package at all, basically. Obviously, there's some like discrepancies with that, like I eat protein powder, which is in a packet and has more than one ingredient and stuff like that. But as much as you can, eat an unprocessed diet. And then the next part of losing that pot belly and the belly fat is training, okay? So we wanna be training our abs and our obliques, okay? So by training them, what you're gonna do is you're gonna develop bigger abs, bigger obliques, and that's gonna one, help them pop and, and have more shape, and then also hold everything tighter too. So I'd recommend training like from doing isometric holds, like planks for your deeper core, to then doing like leg lifts for like your lower abs, crunch variations for your upper abs, and then torso rotations like the cable rush and twist for your obliques, um, and just mixing that all up, as well as doing bigger compound movements too, especially if you're more experienced because that's gonna train your core as well. And we just wanted to develop a nice strong core. It's actually funny, since I've shifted to more CrossFit and that involves a lot of core work, a lot of big compounds, my core has actually developed even more and my rib flare and my core just looks awesome and my abs are definitely popping more. So I, I, I used to be more of a preacher of just eating a caloric deficit to get those abs to show and everything like that. But now I'm, I'm equivalent to eat that caloric deficit, have that high protein, and also make sure you're training your core. And what I do with my clients is I literally have them training abs every day, if not every single, every second day. And um, I have them just doing a simple like 10 minute regime that involves all those different variations, whether it's isometric moves, leg lifts, and uh, rotations to work the different parts of the abdominals. Um, so they're having a well-developed abs. So yeah, that's my recommendation when it comes to the pot belly and the rib flare, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Comment below video suggestions for future videos and I'll see you in the next one.